Hey students, my name is Ankita Agarwal and welcome back to my channel. So students, in my previous video of software engineering lecture series, I discussed one of the most important topic of software engineering that is SDLC, Software Development Life Cycle in detail. Guys, if you are new to my channel, you can watch that video on my channel. Link is given in the description box. And in this video, I am going to explain classical waterfall model. Guys, there are some SDLC models and classical waterfall model is one of them. It is actually the basic and the very simple model. I will tell you how. But before I start with the topic, I want to request you all to share my videos with your friends as much as you can and subscribe to my channel. If you and your friends have not subscribed yet. So as to get notification whenever I upload any video lecture. And don't forget to show thumbs up if you like my video. So now let's get started. Classical waterfall model. Students earlier this model was very popular. But nowadays it is not used. But this model is very important because all the other software development life cycle models are based on this particular model that is classical waterfall model. This model basically divides the life cycle into a set of phases and this classical waterfall model considers that one phase can be started after completion of the previous phase that is the output of one phase will be the input to the next phase. That's why the development process can be considered as a sequential flow in the waterfall and students here the phases do not overlap with each other all right so students here you can see the different sequential phases of the classical waterfall model that is feasibility study requirement analysis designing coding testing and maintenance now let's learn about each of these phases in detail so students, first is the feasibility study phase. See students, if I talk about the main purpose or the goal, then the main goal of this phase is to technically determine whether it would be financially and technically feasible to develop the software. The feasibility study basically involves understanding the problem and then determine the various possible strategies to solve that problem. Alright, and after that, these different solutions are then analyzed based on their benefits and drawbacks. Then the best solution is chosen and all the other phases are carried out as per this solution strategy. Alright. So students, then comes the next phase, requirement analysis and specification. The main aim of this phase is to understand the exact requirements of the customer and then document them properly. And this phase further consists of the two different activities that is requirement gathering and analysis and requir requirement specification. Now if I talk about requirement gathering and analysis, firstly all the requirements regarding the software are gathered from the customer and then gather requirements are analyzed. The main aim or goal of the analysis is to remove the incompleteness and inconsistency. Alright. And in requirement specification, these analyzed requirements are documented in a software requirement specification. SRS document. See, SRS document serves as a contract between the development team and the customers. And if in case in future any dispute arises between the customer and the developer, it can be settled by the SRS document. Alright. Then comes the designing part. Students, the main aim of the design phase is to transform the requirements specified in the SRS document into a structure that is suitable for implementation in some programming language all right and after the designing coding 
and testing phase is there. See students, in coding phase, software design is translated into source code using any suitable programming language. That is why each design module is coded and the aim of the unit testing phase is to check whether each module is working properly or not. Fine? Next is the integration and system testing. See students, once the different different modules are coded, they are then integrated and unit tested. And integration of various modules is carried out incrementally over a number of steps. And during each integration step, previously planned modules are added to the partially integrated system. And the resultant system is then again tested. Finally, after all the modules have been successfully integrated and tested, the full working system is then obtained and system testing is carried out on this. Alright? Students, system testing further consists of the three different kinds of testing activities. That is alpha testing, beta testing and acceptance testing. Where alpha testing is the system testing performed by the development team. And if I talk about the beta testing, it is the system testing performed by a set of customers. And then students, after the software has been delivered, the customer performs the acceptance testing to determine whether to accept the delivered software or to reject it. Alright? Then comes the crucial part that is maintenance. Students, maintenance is the most important phase of a software life cycle. I can also say that the effort spent on maintenance is the 60% of the total effort spent to develop a full software. And students, there are basically three types of maintenance. Corrective maintenance, perfective maintenance and adaptive maintenance. Alright? See, corrective maintenance is carried out to correct the errors that were not discovered during the product development phase. And the perfective maintenance is carried out to enhance the functionalities of the system based on the customer's request. And if I talk about the adaptive maintenance, it is usually required for sorting the software to work in a new environment, such as working on a new computer platform or a new operating system. Alright, so this is about the classical waterfall model. And students, there are some advantages and also some disadvantages of the SDLC model. Let's discuss advantages first. So first advantage is that this model is very simple and is easy to understand. Second is the sequential processing that is the phases in this model are processed one at a time. So it avoids further confusion. Right. Thirdly, this model has a very clear and well understood milestones. Next advantage is that it reinforces good habits that is define before design because we can't go back to the previous phase to recorrect any kind of faults or errors. And students, on the other hand, if I talk about the drawbacks of the classical waterfall model, then this model suffers from various shortcomings. Basically, students, we can't use it in real projects. But we use other software development lifecycle models which are based on this classical waterfall model. So now let's see its disadvantages. First disadvantage of classical waterfall model is that there is no feedback path. As I told you, it's a waterfall model. That is, we go on like one phase to another phase like a waterfall. So it assumes that no error is ever committed by developer during any phases. Therefore, it does not incorporate any mechanism for error correction. Right. Second major drawback is it's difficult to accommodate change requests. As this model assumes that all the customer's requirements can be completely and correctly defined at the beginning of the project, 
but the fact is that the customers requirements keep on changing with time so it's difficult to accommodate the change requests later on then the third drawback is no overlapping of phases students this model recommends that new phase can start only after the completion of the previous phase but in real projects this can't be maintained so to increase the efficiency and reduce the cost phases may overlap all right so students this is all about the classical waterfall model which is one of the model of the sdlc software development life cycle further i will teach you the rest of the sdlc models in my upcoming videos so guys till then stay tuned and keep watching tutorial videos on my channel professor ankita agarwal and guys don't forget to subscribe the channel thank you for watching